Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you about a rather unique Huanangi motherboard on Intel LJ1151 socket. The motherboard is called Huanangi B250MI. And what's unique about this motherboard is that the motherboard is mini ITX with a DDR3 SOD memory slots. So the motherboard works with the laptop DDR3 memory. Also, the motherboard supports all generations for the 1151 socket CPUs such as i3, i5, i7, i9 from 6th to 9th gen. There is no artificial interlimitation for different generations to use different motherboards. The BIOS of the motherboard can also be easily modified to support Intel Xeon E3, V5 and V6 CPUs and I believe it will also work with the next generation Xeon E-something CPUs, but that I cannot confirm because I didn't test it. For DDR3 memory, some have questions if it's going to work with these newer CPUs and yes, it indeed works. I have tested i5-8400 and two Xeon E5, uh, sorry, Xeon E3-1275 V5 V6 and DDR3 memory works just fine. Then if you look at the back side or the I.O. side of the motherboard, there is a power plug. So the motherboard is powered with an external power brick and you do not need an ATX power supply for this. According to the specification or according to Huanangi claims, this B250 motherboard works with power bricks ranging from 12 volts to 20 volts. I have tested the motherboard with a standard Intel NUC power supply, but in the future I plan to reuse one of those big Lenovo power bricks with a square power jack. I just need to buy an adapter from AliExpress to use it with this motherboard. Okay, since the motherboard is rather unique, I will not send you to the unboxing video and will quickly go through the technical specification, then go into the slides with the technical results and finally the conclusion. So this is how the motherboard looks like in the close view. Of course here we have the socket for LJ1151 CPUs, then over here we have two SOD memory slots for DDR3 laptop memory. And on top over here we have a white power header which can be used to power an external monitor. Then this is output for front panel LEDs and buttons. Over here we have a COM port and over here we have a 4-pin PWM fan header for the CPU fan. These are I.O. pins that can be used for an external monitor or all sorts of programmable devices. I have no idea how to test it, if it works or doesn't work, because I don't have anything like that to test it. Then this one is a 3-pin fan header, which is constantly rotating at 100% speed, no voltage adjustments. One and second USB 2.0 front panel headers, which are good to have, but it is a shame that we do not have a USB 3 header for the front panel. Moving forward, we have two SATA 3 ports with SATA power. So when you use an external power brick, you can extract SATA power from these two white power connectors. This one is a CPU power header, but this one is for ATX power supplies. And here you have tiny switches to switch between ATX power input and DC power input from the back side. If you're using an ATX power supply with this 4-pin CPU header, then you will have to jump the power supply because the motherboard does not have any means to start and stop power supply as it does not have the 24-pin header. This one is an internal HDMI header. In my unboxing video, I incorrectly assumed that this might be a TPM header. Unfortunately, it's not a TPM header, it's an internal HDMI header that can be used for a built-in monitor or something like that. Then over here we have an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapters. And later here we have an M.2 slot for SSD drives. Unfortunately, this M.2 is connected to the chipset and not to the CPU itself. Here we have front panel audio exit and this one looks like another SATA power, but I honestly have no idea why we would have a SATA power over here and I didn't test what we have here because Chinese specification is undefined and I don't want to risk burning my SSD drive connecting power in the wrong way. 
The VRM over here is pretty naked and we don't have any coolers. The VRM controller is over here. Then we have one, two, three, four phases here and two additional phases here. I believe these four phases are for the CPU and these two phases are for the CPU's iGPU. Of course, the specification of this MOSFETs and the VRM controller itself you will see on your screen. Rear I.O. on this Quanon GP250M motherboard looks pretty simple. We have DC power input, HDMI output, VGA output, two USB 3 ports, gigabit Ethernet, two more USB 3 ports, and then audio input and output. That's all what we have at the rear I.O. The first thing to mention in the test results is that even though the motherboard is called Quanonju B250M, the chipset on board here is Q270, and chipset Q270 supports PCI Express 3.0 uh, lanes, so NVMe SSD is connected through PCI Express 3.0 X4. Still, it would be better to connect the M.2 slots straight to the CPU, since we do not have X16 slot for GPUs, but uh, 3.0 is still better than 2.0. The CPUs I have tested here, I already mentioned, uh, these are Core i5-8400 and then two Xeon E3-1275, V5 and V6. For these two Xeons to work, the BIOS must be modified, and the modified BIOS is available in Mi 899 application, which you can of course download from the link provided in the video description. For memory, I have tested two sticks 8GB each, Samsung DDR3 1600. I also have one 16GB Micron DDR3 1600 memory stick, which worked just fine with every CPU tested, so in total I got 24GB of memory, one 8GB stick and one 16GB stick. It's important to mention that these 16GB DDR3 memory sticks are not compatible with older platforms such as LG1155 or LG1150. I am yet to test if 16GB memory sticks will work with the Core i7 5th generation for the LG1150 socket, but for now I can say for sure that with the E3, V2 and V3, 16GB memory sticks do not work. USB and SATA ports work just fine, I didn't detect any issues. CPU smartphone works, but unfortunately it works uh, only with the 4-pin PWM fans and only for the fan header. The extra header here is a 3-pin and it works at 100% rotation speed. M.2 slot was tested with my crucial P3 SSD drive. It's not the fastest SSD, but it works just fine with the chipset provided PCI Express 3.0 X4 lanes. M.2 Wi Fi slot I have tested with Intel Wireless AC 9260. I have also tried to use AC 9560, which is a CNVI module, but that one was not detected. Other than that, audio and network didn't give me any issues. BIOS chip on the motherboard is our standard Winbond W25Q64VV and it can be read and written using FPTW.exe from Windows. Of course, I have added support for Huanan GB250MI uh, motherboard to my Mi 899 application. VRM here is pretty poor. I have tested with my E31275V5 that has about 80 watt TDP and after about 30 minutes of 8064 stress test, the temperatures I was able to measure were around 80 degrees Celsius. And what's worse is that the VRM components themselves didn't really heat up that much. The hotter spot was on the PCB itself, which makes me believe that the PCB traces are rather thin or of a bad quality. And the wires which are delivering power to the VRM components are heating up themselves and heating up the PCB, which is not nice. Cooling down the PCB itself is much harder than cooling down the components. The total power consumption from the wall under the stress test was somewhere around 102 watts. In terms of features, I'm glad to report that sleep mode works on Huanan GB250M and Wake on LAN works as well. I have tested to send the motherboard to sleep and then wake it through LAN and yes, that works. CPU overclocking is available in the BIOS, but only if you manually unlock the overclocking option in the BIOS, which I of course did in my modified BIOS. 
I do not have any unlocked CPU, so I cannot check overclocking, but voltage adjustment, uh, so-called undervolting, works and you can tune the voltage of the CPU. XMP and RAM timings are also available, but only if you manually unlock the overclocking option. I have tried overclocking my DDR3-1600 to DDR3-1866 and that worked, but I could not get the motherboard booted with the DDR3-2133. I don't know if it's my RAM, because DDR3-1600 is pretty slow after all, or is the motherboard limitation. If I would have DDR3-1866 or DDR3-2133 memory sticks, then I could make a conclusion, but as of right now I can only say that trying to overclock my DDR3-1600 memory sticks to DDR3-2133 didn't work. Unfortunately, Intel integrated or Intel firmware provided TPM module, which is called Intel PTT, does not work on this one on G motherboard either. So we do not have a TPM header and we do not have Intel PTT, which means there is no way to connect Intel TPM onto this motherboard without some sophisticated hacks. And that means that you have to say goodbye to full Windows 11 compatibility. ECC RAM I also have not tested because I do not have any so dim ECC memory sticks, so I don't know if it works or not, but in the BIOS there are some ECC configuration options. Restore and power loss and clear CMOS functions work just fine on the motherboard. And testing idle power consumption with Core i5-8400 I could measure from the wall somewhere around 15 watts. 15 watts is not astonishingly good, but it is much better than most of the desktop computers that would consume somewhere around 30 watts at idling. So if you're not keeping your mini PC on all the time, then 15 watts is pretty acceptable. If you're one of those people who skip the whole video, don't read technical specification, don't check the test results and just go into the conclusion, well then here is a short summary for you. Huanan GB250MI is a pretty decent okayish motherboard, and if you need a mini PC for whatever reason, maybe it's just a hobby project for you, maybe you need a TV bench PC, or maybe you're building a starter PC for your kid. Given you already have LJ1151 CPU, you have DDR3 SOTI memory, and you have a power brick, then this motherboard could be a good base to build your mini PC with a 3D printed chassis or with whatever chassis you can find. In other cases, if you're building from scratch, then I would say that Huanan GB250MI is not the best option, because for the combined cost of all the components you would have to buy, you probably can find a better deal looking at these OEM machines in a small form factor and micro form factor from Dell, HP and Lenovo. Huanan GB250MI is a Chinese motherboard after all, it also has its limitations. We do not have PCI Express X16 slot, which some might want. We do not have USB 3.0 header for the front panel. The M.2 slot for a SSD drive is connected through the chipset, not to the CPU. So basically this motherboard is wasting all 16 lanes of PCI Express from the CPU, which is a shame. VRM here is also pretty weak, and as always AliExpress is a lottery, my motherboard works, it's fine, but yours might be totally defective and might not work. And of course, we do not have any possibility to install TPM 2.0 module for full Windows 11 compatibility. And yes, I know that it is possible to install Windows 11 without TPM 2.0 module, but the application, games, anti-cheats and whatever else that requires TPM 2.0 will still not work even though you hacked Windows 11 onto an incompatible device. Alternatively, you can also consider a mini PC, which are rather plentiful these days. So, for example, I have got this one for a review. I should have probably tested it long time ago, but here we are. So, this one is Mini X Z150. And Z150 is not chipset name, it's just the mini PC name. It comes with Intel N150 CPU. Intel N150 is not Core i3, it's not the i5, it's just N150. It comes with four Intel efficient cores without performance cores. 
As you can see, this entire mini PC is smaller than just this motherboard. So if you are restricted in size, mini PC is the only way. But if size restrictions are not that harsh, then it would be interesting to compare these two. So in the next video, I plan to build a mini PC using this Huanan B250MI motherboard with the Intel Xeon E3 1275V6 and make a head-to-head -head comparison with this mini PC to see which one fits uh, which use case better. With that, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and I hope you have learned something new and useful. Bye for now. Thank you.